do yoga, aka man stretch. All right, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. Mr. Mishola is here. Mr. Jones here. Mr. Hoff here. Mrs. Pittman here. Here. Review and approval of the November 16th, 2017 regular meeting minutes of the Board of Education. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Hupp, second by Mr. Jones. Mr. Misholi? Yes. Jones? Yep. Mr. Hoff? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mrs. Yes. Uh, we have presentations tonight. Uh, real quick, I would like to thank uh, Mrs. Catania. This is her last board meeting, so uh, appreciate everything you've done. Uh, you've done, you've accomplished quite a bit in your four years, so thank I would you. like to present you with this. Yeah, you didn't have to do that, black. but thank you very but, much. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank oh, yeah. you. It's a lot more, I think, when you get on to it than expected. It and, is. Uh, it's more than you. More time realize. consuming, I think, than, <laughs> than you originally think. So I uh, appreciate everything you've done. Thank you. And we have a special presentation tonight. We have our first uh, robotics competition that we entered last Saturday. Uh, so we're kind of excited about that. Kind of ties into the whole fishbowl. So, uh, Mr. Moore, I'd kind of turn it over to you. Yeah, uh, so. Um, Back in front of you guys again, I was like coming and talking to you guys. Um, if you know anything about FIRST Robotics, it was generated about almost 15 to 20 some years ago. Um, we're, us in Austin Town, are the only local schools that actually compete in this size robot. Um, some of the other high schools like Gerard, Warren Harding compete in the bigger ones that are more expensive. Um, this is sort of a mid-grade. And then um, there are some other local schools that do the um, local robotics league. So we're potentially venturing um, potentially in that um, in the coming years, hopefully. So uh, what this is is um, they have to build a robot that is coded. Um, they can use any parts they want. Um, we bought a kit um, through a grant that we got through being a rookie team for this year through um, FIRST. Uh, we got $750 um, towards the purchase of the kit and the robot, and then the school um, covered, I think, it was about $500. Um, for, for the initial year to cover the cost of going to one competition um, and uh, the remaining of the robot parts. So roughly um, about $1,500 to $2,000 is the average budget to sort of run this program. Um, and so what they had to do is they had to build a robot that had to fit into an 18 by 18 inch cube um, in the beginning and then they had to program it for um, autonomous movement for 30 seconds. Um, this year the game was called the um, Relic Recovery. Um, they had what these called these glyphs. They had them stationed in the center of a 12 by 12 playing surface. And then you started your robot on what was called a balance stone. So it was a three quarter inch platform that was raised about an inch off the ground. And you had to maneuver your robot off the, the platform successfully and either stack a glyph, that's what these were called, into a rack, or do something else autonomously for 30 seconds and you scored points. And if you got your robot back up at the, um, on the balance stone, you scored more points. And then you had a two minute, um, what's called a teleop, where the students through an Xbox or 360 controller were able to control the robot to do whatever they wanted to do it. Um, and you scored points by stacking blocks, um, putting a relic outside of the playing area, um, and actually getting back up on the, the balance stone. Um, and then you play the competition, um, four teams go at a time, there's a blue side and red side, so you're actually paired up with another team. So you kind of talk like, hey, this is what our robot can do, and this is what your robot can do. And so there's teamwork 
among playing it. Um, the first couple matches, being rookie, were a little rough. Um, thank God we had good uh, Alliance members. They helped us out. Uh, we had um, sort of a, a brain epiphany or brainstorm idea. I don't know it came that we needed to make some changes to the robot at lunchtime. And we made some changes, and we were able to, um, the next match, um, it was a low-scoring match. Out of the 50 points, we scored like 46 of them by ourselves. So we were able to make some good changes. Um, and the kids did a wonderful job being sort of the first experience for me and them. Um, and hopefully we're going to continue um, this on in, in the future. Um, I've actually started today to get in contact with um, outside uh, community businesses that actually start sponsoring the program. And so hopefully I can come back and, and hopefully in January or, or a little bit later and, and say that we have a, a nice donations um, on behalf of some community. So I'm going to turn it over to, um, we actually had um, six students. Um, three of them couldn't be here, uh, two of them were at basketball practice, and I don't know what was the job. So uh, it was Aaron English, uh, Garrett uh, Bueno, and um, Josh Demensky. Um, two of them are um, seventh graders, and then Josh is uh, in ninth grade. So we're kind of very young. Um, some of the other teams we were actually competing against were uh, juniors and seniors. That's and crazy. So we, yeah, so, yeah. So this program runs from 7 to 12, and that's the reason why I picked it is because it actually covers this entire building. So we can get everybody, um, our juniors and seniors, um, that want to partake, I guess. So I'm going to turn it over to the three that are here so they can actually introduce themselves and get some practice so they have to do um, part of it is they have to keep a notebook and then they go in front of a panel of judges and get interviewed. Um, so it teaches them a lot of real world skills that they're just not getting you know, just in a typical classroom. So I'm going to turn it over to them. So which one of you is going to go first? Paper, I got it. I got it. Like I like that. know it has to be. Paper, rock. Let's go. We'll go with the freshman first. <laughs> So obviously my name is Garrett Catania, if you didn't already know. I was uh, the programmer for this. Uh, these two were kind of the builders. And uh, my main job was to program both the autonomous and the actual controller mode. Uh, they were obviously a great help, even if they didn't help me program, because uh, anytime I needed help testing something or fixing, uh, they were always there. Uh, I actually think we did quite well for our first year. We placed pretty high out of the 24 teams that went, and I believe only one other team was considered a rookie team. Uh, our autonomous didn't actually work as intended, so we had to stay on the balance board and gain points through that, uh, because we didn't want to lose points from hitting someone. <laughs> Uh, as so it was a little bit of a strategy. <laughs> so we actually got points for starting there and not moving and ending there. So, it's, so it's strategy. It's like, hey, we're going to strategy. We saw their teams doing it, so we joined them. All right, sorry. Uh, as for the solo program, I have to say that that actually went extremely well. Uh, that's how we scored most of our points. Uh, we would have one driver that controlled the, all the wheels. And we had one driver that controlled the arm as well as the claws. Uh, the claws are just controlled by two servos, and as for everything else, it's controlled by uh, DC motors. So it did take a lot of coordination, but uh, we had a coach there to help communicate between the two players because it can be given stressful. And uh, that coach did actually help quite a bit in relaying the information that one was trying to say to the other. Uh, that's all I can think of for right now, so I'll pass it over to Ryan. I'm Ryan Higgins, and I was one of the builders, and I was happy to join the club, and I really did enjoy it. I liked the team members. They were really kind, and it made me learn an experience on how to build a robot and what to do in a contest and what not to do. <laughs> and I had fun competing against other teams. The other teams were very nice, and like Moore said, Thank goodness we had them at the beginning of the game. <laughs> and uh, I'm Camelia Blackman. Same things Ryan said. I am a builder. I was uh, one of the few people who came the first few days. So, yeah. <laughs> so she can say she's one of the founding team members. Yeah, one of the founding team mem members. Um, the members were very nice. Um, we were always able to work around if people had um, 
games, uh, things they had to do, otherwise studying. The building wasn't the hardest part. I believe the hardest part was the autonomous. That didn't work correctly. <laughs> Can somebody help me? What is the autonomous again? Okay, so so the autonomous is in the very beginning of the competition. Um, you had to program. Um, we can do a short. We can test a short. We have no idea what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, what it is is that um, so in the beginning of the competition, you have to on um, the house controlled is actually via two cell phones um, through direct um, Wi-Fi, um, and so every team has their own um, unique cell phone um, that was part of the kit, and so the autonomous is. Uh, you load it, um, they have a little desk, you go there and they tell you, okay, autonomous game starting in 3, 2, 1, you initialize and you stand back and the robot has to do something. And then it counts down to 30 seconds and then you have the ability and they say, okay, um, going in tally off in 8 seconds, so they give you 8 seconds to get it autonomous and put it back into driver mode and then for the next 2 minutes the kids control the robot. And so um, when they mentioned the idea of the coach, um, it was their teammate member. It wasn't me. I was there at the first competition to kind of help them. Um, but we had two drivers, and one of the other kids was actual coach there. So I kind of just stayed back and sort of enjoyed sort of watching them compete. All right. So are you, you going to attempt an autonomous? Uh, yeah. OK, so we'll give you an idea of what autonomous is. Um, uh, so this is a program that we had set up for uh, the left side of the blue and uh, I think what it was supposed to do was uh, take that block that we had preloaded and uh, drop it into the box to hopefully score some points. And let's see if this works. No, it's, it's fine. Okay, so it uh, grabbed it and then... a video of that kind of video. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so it was uh, kind of like go the block. So that's the idea is to get off the balance stone and then just sort of turn. And so, um, can you show it again? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you missed your photo up. Yeah, you missed the photo up. And the reason, one of the reasons why we um, sort of did run our, our um, autonomous mode is that a lot of other teams in the first row and some other teams in the um, the robot had to maintain the uh, initial 18 inches until the actual start. So our arm was raised above the 18 point, and so we'd have to go back real quick and change the code. So we just said it's not really worth the score points. Staying here like some other teams did, we just sort of stayed with that. Um, so going forward, um, we are on a waiting list um, for one other competition that will happen in February at Kent State. Um, all the local, um, Austin Town was um, lucky enough to have a spot. Um, we were able to get um, another competition um, at Cleveland State on January 5th. Um, we opted not to go to that one because it was a little too quick. Um, and then having the kids come over the Christmas break was just a little much. Um, if we got everything worked out before we went to Austin Town, we probably would have been going to that one. Um, so we're hoping to get on um, the list for the one at um, Kent State. How long of the day was this, Steve? Um, we actually, it was, uh, we had to check in Friday, so we actually went Friday night. Um, they had some um, problems getting um, set up there, so we had to be there roughly 5.30. They were supposed to start inspecting the robot. Um, you had to have stickers, which we didn't have, and some other stuff. They had to make sure it fit 18-inch box, so we were there from 5.30 to almost like 8.30, I think, we left. Um, and then we were back there, um, so we had a few more things we had to change. Um, in the morning, we got there at 7, and I think we finished up. Um, we didn't make it to the final round. Uh, it was at 3.30 we left. Um, the final round um, did not finish till almost 5, so it's, it's basically the well, Did the day. parents get to stay? Yeah, the, the parents got to stay. Um, they stayed watched. Um, some parents actually provided some lunch for the kids. Um, I tried to keep them, I uh, had conversations with them and, and the bleachers were me. Uh, we weren't playing, trying to keep them updated. Um, we actually, out of the 24 teams, we actually finished 11th ranked overall in terms of the points. Uh, we ended up, uh, with our matches, had six qualifying points. So we ended up, um, so at the end they picked the top four teams, and the top four teams can go then and pick another two other teams to work with them, be part of their alliance to go to the finals. Um, so we were eligible to make it as one of the chosen alliance teams. Um, 
But since it's our autonomous didn't quite work, I can see why we weren't, weren't chosen. But but we ended up 11th, ranked 11th out of, um, and I did not check um, the scoring, but they have it actually how many points your robot actually scored. And I, like I said, out of that one match, out of the 50 uh, points that were actually scored, we scored 46 of them by ourselves. So we and we helped. Um, and it's right after lunch, and we um, we added some um, more wheels to our robot to actually help us get back on the balance home. We were kind of struggling to get there, and um, it's right after we did it, we had that first match, and we kind of found our groove. And then from there on, and the rest of the afternoon, we did really well. I think that's just fantastic. I mean, you kids all have fun. Good. Right? It seemed like it. I know when I was talking to you guys and before you even went that day, and you were showing me that it was great. So. Yeah, it was it, it was um, a very kind of stressful day, uh, but you know, looking around and watching um, out of the 24 teams, I mean, there was robots. Um, give you the idea of price range. Uh, maybe the parts on this, we'll say this is like maybe a $500 robot um, from all the parts that we used out of what we had. Maybe a little bit more. Um, the one that actually ended up winning the competition and actually setting a world record for the points. So this is a worldwide competition. Um, was a $5,000 robot. Just to build a robot, that doesn't include, their budget for the year is about 8000 They go to all these different competitions and stuff like that. Um, wow. So basically for what we did, um, actually we had a couple other teams come over and like they were experienced teams and asked, well, you know, for as a rookie team, what do you say? And the one team, it was kind of funny, he's like, you know what, that's way better than the robot we had our first year. Uh, it's a very impressive robot. Um, and then it was fun to watch these kids go out and interact with other kids they had no clue who they were and make connections. Um, we were able to get um, a couple contacts from other teams to say, hey, if you ever need help, hey, we're willing to help you. And that's part of the first idea is to actually go out and help other teams too. Um, but um, they were very helpful um, and, and sort of very encouraging for our kids too. That's great. So did the fishbowl, have, you have special shirts to wear? Uh, yes, we did. We actually, the fishbowl did make some Aww. shirts um, that Camilla actually designed. Um, she drew up um, a blue jay and some wrenches and I was able to skin them in and actually put them on the shirt. So it was actually her design that we actually were able to wear. I think wear. I did see them actually. Yeah. yeah. So um, we did have special shirts that um, we did have for them, um, so we matched. Um, I don't think the next competition we're going to go a little crazy like some of the other teams. They get a little more creative. I don't know. Uh, some of the kids, you know, had unique costumes, uh, weird hats, and stuff like that. So it's a good. It's it's kind of like a party atmosphere. Um, maybe I can get them to come out of the show. Sort of crazy. I don't know. They know about the team. Yeah, it's something. I, it, you know, it's it. It was it was a, a fun experiment. Um, and like I said, I, I, I'm going out and actively seeking sponsors so we can actually continue this um, so the school doesn't have to keep incurring the, the cost. And so hopefully um, we can get some sponsors. Well, I do want to say on behalf of the board and all that, I appreciate you guys coming to the board and presenting that. It's great. I love it when we can uh, show off some of the new things we're doing, you know, academically especially. So. Mr. Moore, it seems like we're always inviting you, but thank you for coming. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Uh, keep plugging away. Oh, good luck. Go. All right. Yep. I'll have to send you a video. I have a really good video of you guys competing, putting okay. blocks in. So, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we have, a, we have a couple pictures. Um, eventually, make makeup on a website. Um, eventually, um, as we go on, uh, we'll create a, a sort of a Twitter page. Um, a lot of other teams have that. In some I think we can put that. If you send it to me, we can yeah. put it on the website. Actually. Yeah, because I mean, I have them in action. Yeah. Um, okay, good. <laughs> you can put a link and put it on the website. Cool. All right. Hey, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, thanks for yeah. parents that brought you guys like, too. All of a sudden. Uh, is that I'll a just move to superintendent's report. I have a yeah. question. Yes. Um, is he volunteering for robotics or is that a supplemental contract? No, I can mark it down. We got, no, it's right now. It's volunteer. Mm -hmm. Okay. We probably need to discuss that. Spend yeah, whole day there. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. Good, good. to know. Um, on my part, we got Christmas break. Uh, kids are off tomorrow. We do have a waiver day tomorrow with, with staff here. So kids start their break tomorrow. Uh, and uh, the 20 or the 2nd is the last day. So we actually come back on the 3rd. I know some people go back on the 2nd, but we come back on the 3rd. Uh, waiver day is tomorrow. Uh, we have the whole day uh, kind of planned. Uh, the state uh, wants us to do AED training, so we have that first thing in the morning. 
and then we're breaking off with the county. Uh, Darlene has stuff for the drivers and everybody. Every department has some stuff going on, but uh, the certified staff's busy all day with uh, content stuff with the county. So they're breaking into different groups. It's here all day for the, uh, that type of training. Um, we do have uh, uh, coffee and donuts at 8. We have uh, lunch at 11.30. And the staff got their t-shirts, so I just wanted to kind of show you what the fishbowl made for the staff. Uh, the shirts like that. And actually the staff part is a reflective type. So like when you see like on jogging pants, you know, light hits it, so it's pretty neat. So they were passed out. We might have like a little blue out tomorrow in the cafeteria, like uh, game day. So uh, uh, that. So, um, so tomorrow's going to be a busy day. Uh, Martin Luther King Day is the 15th, so there's no classes. Uh, Blue Jay Elf, if you, get, uh, you know, that was uh, donations through organizations and people, and they take care of, uh, I'll have a more detail probably at the retreat for you, but uh, that took place a week ago, and I, I want to say they helped like 60-some families, but I'll have to get the breakdown on that. So, uh, all county board meeting is on January 31st. It's at the Career Center. Uh, we could probably talk about more of the retreat, I guess. Um, I don't think typically we haven't been attending, so you guys can think about it. I went last year. Yeah, uh, it was the last year, a couple years ago. I think. Two years ago. Yeah. yeah. So um, I guess that's the date. Think about it. We'll talk about it on the retreat. Uh, PTA is actually providing. Uh, it was thirty-five hundred dollars they gave us to allocate for uh, new handles on the elementary school. The ones that uh, lock when they shut it, and uh, so it makes it easier uh, for security type reasons that they're they're making recommendations for security. So PTA kind of our officer uh, Bill Sosnowski uh, approached PTA at one of their meetings uh, last two weeks ago on uh, I don't know if it was Monday night I think, but uh, he presented them the program. They kind of voted right away to give it to them. So uh, and they're actually putting them in over break, uh, Mr. Oh. Snowden and. Uh, Custodians are putting them in already. So, um, Michalina Terranova uh, reached her thousand dollar, our thousand uh, basketball career points about, oh well, maybe it's two weeks ago now, but uh, that's the third girl in two years that reached that. So, uh, congratulations to her and uh, the girls' team's off to a pretty good start. I believe they're seven and zero right now, and I believe they're at Middle Ridge tonight. Is that right, Tom? Yep. Yeah. So, uh, uh, December E Blast. Did everybody get that from the board? I think it's in your packet, but uh, the e-blast, just so everybody's aware, it's here, you can sign if you're not getting them. It's an electronic message that goes out every month. If for some reason you're not getting them or you know anybody that's not getting them, uh, you can go onto our main website and there's a place to log in and put your message. So uh, try to cover some information uh, that's helpful, so hopefully everybody's getting that. After school care, uh, the survey went out on Monday, and I will be getting the results tomorrow uh, from Mrs. Smith collected them today, and we'll see if we can start something up in probably mid-January. I'm meeting on January 9th, if that's the Tuesday, with, I think we had seven teachers sign up to, that would want to do it. So I'm meeting with them on the 9th to go over how many people signed up and everything and, and work out some details about how, remember, they would have to pay for the after-school care. So, um, so we'll know more on, uh, well, we'll know more tomorrow. I'll know more tomorrow if we can go ahead and do it, if there's enough people with interest. But um, on the 9th, I'm meeting with the people that signed up for it to make sure we're moving ahead with it. So I would think we could start it, uh, well, we might be able to start it, like, you know, after Martin Luther King weekend or something. So we'll see. So you'll know the cost once you see how many people yeah, are interested again, and figure out how much it's going to cost us to... Yeah, I mean, sometimes people sign it and then don't yeah, use it, right. but uh, I mean, we're not in it to make money on the project, yeah. it's really just to break even, even if we actually lose a little little bit, I mean, it's fine, but the main goal is just to kind of break even. So, and before school is being utilized quite a bit, I mean, there's anywhere from 15 to 30 kids in there in the morning, so. I can imagine. Yeah, that's, so that's working out well, actually, so uh, uh, it's one of those things you start and you have to look at and revamp a little bit. So uh, Mrs. Guinness was doing it one day and she was on the freeway and a uh, part fell off a car in front of her and hit her car, but she couldn't, she couldn't stop. 
because no one would have been here for the kids. So, uh, and it's at six. You know, it's early. So seven. Uh, so we had to work out some details. So um, just one of those things you work on. You know, but uh, before school's going well, we'll probably start the after school zone. We got enough people in uh, you know mid January. So uh, art. I didn't quite get everything I needed to show you. So. Uh, Mrs. Mandalore, or Miss Mandalore has been doing quite a bit with art and uh, I'll probably do it at the retreat. She was going to give me pictures and stuff to show, but I didn't quite get them yet. So, But I know she was busy today. Uh, Salvation with, Army. Okay. I know she yeah. went with some kids to the Salvation Army uh, to do some stuff uh, for the holidays and that. So um, everybody's just kind of busy right now with stuff. So uh, as soon as I can get those, I'll present them uh, at the January board meeting probably for you. Uh, boys JV and uh, varsity holiday basketball tournament is next week. It's our first one. It's uh, the 28th and 29th. I believe we have Jackson Milton, uh, Columbiana, Marlington. I'm drawing a blank on the 14th. Uh, but anyhow, they made, uh, here we go, uh, Maplewood. So uh, our fishbowl made uh, shirts for each one of the kids to get a shirt and the sponsor. So Spitzer kind of gave us uh, money to uh, sponsor the varsity uh, and Burger King for the JV. So they put each team's logo That's on the back. Nice. That's nice. That's fun. So, uh, and the kids made all these shirts and uh, we have a trophy with the car on it. Uh, <laughs> For the champs. Oh, that's what that was and for. Actually, everybody probably think I was sitting up here at my lunch. <laughs> this is the Burger King trophy, fun. and it's uh, really cool. You can to touch it. It's kind of looks real. So uh, that's fun. It's our first annual uh, holiday tournament. So uh, there's that, and then the kids get plaques too, just so you know. So one with has Spitzers on it, and uh, one with uh, Burger King on it. So. That's cool. Yeah. Really nice. Mr. Hogue you know, has put in plenty of time on this, just to kind of let you know that. Uh, worked real hard getting that all organized. So the tournament's really, like, it's not like we're putting out any money for it. It's all sponsored, which is nice. So uh, good deal. And I just wanted to show, we'll be hanging this up. We finally got, uh, I finally got the, the plow with the kids and everything in an 8 by 12 picture framed and everything. So you yeah, guys see it all right before there. It's nice. So we'll put that up. Uh, and then what I got here, uh, I got starting at 3 o'clock. I don't know what that's for. Oh, okay, the games. But uh, the kids approached me uh, probably three weeks ago about starting uh, like little intramural ping pong games. Uh, so what we did was uh, Mr. Smith uh, from the high school science department is going to watch them after school. They're going to get teams or see who wants to be in it and make brackets and they're going to start that after school. Um, I actually got a ping pong table at home that um, I'm, we're going to have brought out here and they're going to use my table and uh, just folds up so put it in the cafeteria so they're going to do that uh, one day a week after school uh, starting in January so just for fun so uh, if they can make it they make it. Uh, like kids that want to be in it and something comes up whether they have practice or a game it just, they'll just pass. It's, just, just for fun. So, uh, but you know, a couple. I think there's four or five kids approached me, so we tried to figure out how we could do it. So, uh, that's it. I think for my part. John. You were you, you right on the ping pong. No, I am not good. I told him no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm be more glad to have my table brought out, but I'm not going to be in it. <laughs> I have just a couple things. Um, on page five, the. Uh, Nick, the uh, organizational meeting is on the uh, January 6th. Are you, are you okay with that, everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we'll hold there. We're actually going to have two board meetings. We'll have the organizational, then we adjourn, and then we start the regular board meeting, so for the month. Okay. And um, also, you received my email about the lift we sold. Mm -hmm. Is everybody okay with that? It's on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Dave did a real good job. Doing some negotiation with the company, we'll get the new lift. So it's going to be a wash after we sell that lift and buy the new lift for $6,500. We had a real big scissor lift. It's just too big for the school. Mm -hmm. So we sold it and we're buying a used one for the same cost we're selling it. So it's just a small one in that world. Um, the um, the state auditors have been in for the last month. Everything's going well with that. 
Um, they'll be here for another couple weeks, I think they told me, and then they'll leave for another school. And so far, things don't roll well. Um, other than that, the office is it's running good right now. That's all I have. Legislative report. Sure. I'm going to give some updates regarding some House bills that would be considered. Try to be brief. House Bill 200 is a situation that creates uh, an Ohio Opportunity Scholarship Voucher Program. This is a new statewide program allowing K-12 students to use a voucher to attend private schools. What this does is the bill expands vouchers to students in all school districts, regardless of the academic report card rating of their school building or district, and the only qualifier for eligibility is household income. So students whose family income is at or below 100% of the federal poverty level, roughly 73,800 for a family of four, would qualify for a 5,000 voucher. So <clears throat> the end result is the legislation would directly fund the vouchers from the state instead of being deducted from the resident school district. And this is going to drain, this would drain resources that we best use for public schools, which we are a part of. So that would be considered it's House Bill 200. House Bill 418 requires a public or chartered non-public school to transmit a student's record within five business days when the student transfers to their school. I don't know what it is now, but that must be a change. And also House Bill 426. If it's an employee of a school or institution of higher education, okay. Uh, I saw I should have read that earlier. Regarding student religious expression and to the entitled the Act of Ohio Student Religious Liberties is House Bill 428. And lastly, House Bill 420, or excuse me, 226 being considered provides for a permanent three-day sales tax holiday each August during which sales of clothing and school supplies are exempt uh, from taxes. That one, Mr. Michelle, there is no time limit on it right now, so they're making it five days. So they're tightening it up? Yeah, yes. That's all I have. All right. I thought that 226, I thought they already, we were doing that every year anyway. <laughs> so I think they just do it uh, for that one weekend each year, or, or one day. I think it's just one day. It's one day or a weekend. I thought it was Pennsylvania. I thought it was a weekend. I thought yeah. it was two days. I, thought, I think days. it's two days. Okay. All right, round table discussion. Mr. Micholli? Sure. So I spoke with Mr. McGee today. He's going to attend next January's meeting to talk about the basketball court at the old high school, the proposal, with some input from the Citizen Association and the North Jackson Business Association. So he'll be here in January. He wants to give us the highlights of that. And also, we were discussing the initial build of the school and the percentage we were supposed to get from the state. And he mentioned, why have we not pursued that legally? Why not uh, take that? It's been 10 years. It was supposed to come our way. Isn't that something that we could consider I've sent going it. after? First, and I've sent three, three letters and personally talked to the person down there we went we made a visit the one yeah, time we went down there years ago. Yeah. Mitch, we are on the radar. We're just not at the point where we qualify for funding. Oh, absolutely. And the whole point of, of being legally involved would take it to a different level. Yeah. Different eyes, different look. So I think we talked to Shivani. Yeah, he's asking more about the legal to yeah. yeah. pursue something. We could talk about it. I mean, I will call the school boards for you. How about that? I will call the school and ask them. Who's involved? It was just today that I talked to him, and he mentioned. I said, "You know, yeah, because the 17 percent is supposed to be around 2.7 million. If I remember correct, right? Yeah, correct. So to invest five thousand dollars to try to get that might not be the worst idea. Yeah. I will look into that. <clears throat> Spoke with Mr. Gary Hemphill, representing the Citizen Association. He asked if we could consider an easement legally for access to the sign at the old high school in the event that we uh, would sell the property. They'd still have access to that sign." So I told them I would mention that. So they want to be able to get to it no matter what. Two things. I will look into that now. So originally they talked about uh, just being, they would be allowed to take it. You know, I don't know yeah. about an easement because that might make it harder to uh, like sell something. Like if you ever want to sell the property, I mean originally we talked about that they would just be allowed to take it. Like a write up that, like an agreement that they would be allowed to just make sure that it was dismantled and taken. 
So there's no guarantee that the sign stays, obviously. Yeah, they're so talking about the electronic sign they want to purchase and put yeah. there. Yes. When that happens. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there used to be electricity or a light on that sign, and there appears to not be one down. now. Like no, I understand down. exactly what he's speaking yeah. of, but I'm just saying, is there no, did something happen? The school. Because it used to have, no, even though since the school has been was gone, it? It, was it was lit in the yeah. past, mm -hmm. but it isn't lit anymore. I vaguely remember that. Well, they want to, they would run their own box, so they're built for it, so they're everything. Else. No, I understand. I just thought something changed. Like, I don't know why it changed, why it wasn't lit. You sell the property, then we're. Oh, he wasn't worried about getting the sign. He was worried about just not worried. He wanted to know if we could make it so that the sign stays there. Right. An easement. And that's kind of difficult. Yeah, I understand why he would do that, but I don't know that we could do that at this time. No, no. Just make sure that they would have the right to take it down and take it. We'll have to just make sure to keep it on our radar. For right. Yeah, and I don't, for the public, all five of you, I don't see uh, selling that. It's, I'm wrong in the near future for sure. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Topic for organizational meeting. That's all I have. Do we have, um, for the retreat, discussion with the lights down at uh, yeah, Mr. Hogue's actually, I got him on there to come in at 1. Because he's in the morning, is kind of tough, and he's going to be with that tournament. Uh, and so we have on the retreat discussion for the, the building. Again, mm -hmm. yeah, that would be with Mr. Hogue, though. And do we have all the organizations coming to the retreat that day as well? Uh, no, not really. No, right right now, I have, uh, I tend I to be, I have Ohio coming. School Boards coming. I mean, we've had talk about stuff coming to pass. Talking about we have. I was going to change it up a little bit, to be honest with you, just to make it a little more beneficial, I think. Because they can come during the year, too. I'd just be interested to see what progress they're making with these people. I know they, I met with uh, one of them, handed them all my files and on the jump drive the other day with, with them and went over. Oh, you're talking about boosters and stuff? Yeah. Oh, okay. They usually come in August, though, don't they? They come at the beginning. They come at the organizational uh, also. In the past, we've, we've had them at the retreat. Okay. I don't, I haven't yeah. talked to anybody like that about it. Other than that, I don't know. Mr. Jones, what was the building that you were talking about? The, uh, the like a wellness type center, uh, uh, an ex surface building for like a weight room and a gym. Yeah. I'm good. Con? Uh, I know John sent the email to us, but yeah, I'd like to thank you for the donation to the mm -hmm. program and we have someone else on all the mm -hmm. front somewhere. Yeah. Just wanted to thank the donation. Thanks, Michelle. Oh, band boosters. That's all I had. Um, just curious, I have a few things, but I was just curious, why are we asking the Ohio School Board Association to come? Just what to, was your Just to thought? explain policies and everything, how they work. Is there a certain particular thing that you think we need to be educated on? Well, we're members. Just how we all work. No, I mean, you, you can call them any time. I mean, they, that's the, our no, right as a board wrong. member, so I'm just curious as to why they would be on our agenda. That's all. Just to come up and make sure we're all doing like what we're supposed to be doing, I guess, basically. Me, I'm supposed to be presenting stuff to you and the public and your role and my role and all that. Honestly, like a refresher, Todd, I think. I don't know. Nick, Todd, Mr. Cameron's new and Todd and I are fairly new and Nick's come on. I think we ever went over it. I have them on speed dial, so I was just curious. That's why they were on our agenda. That's all. No, they do presentations. <laughs> uh, okay. They, do, uh, they said they actually do all days, but I didn't want it all day and so they're gonna break it down. Okay. Sounds great. Um, we had mentioned the Robotics Club, which I think is fabulous. I think it's great. I think um, a lot of people in our community don't realize that we do have other clubs that are non-sports related. Um, I, I like that you mentioned the ping pong. I think that's fun for those non-athletic kids. Um, there's also one that my daughter's in, which I thought to be very interesting. It's a board game club. Hmm. So I kind of think that all of those clubs are kind of along the same lines of each other, which I'm excited that we have those other opportunities for students that 
you know, have those varied interests. Um, so if there's any way to support the teachers that are sponsoring those clubs, even a board game club is going to require extra time. So if there's some way that we could stipend them in some way that would be beneficial to them, I would be encouraged to look at that for those particular teachers. So if we could think about that. Um, Quiz Bowl, I know you mentioned that you were running that at the elementary. Has that ended or are we, I can't. Uh, sixth and fifth has ended. Okay. Fourth is going to pick their teams up when we come back. And then we talked about doing it in third. But we also talked about, Brian and I have talked about how to do a, uh, like, a, I don't know, it'd be like a Nintendo type tournament, like a, where they oh, play a game. Yeah, games. Uh, like an Fun. For recess. Yeah. And you guys have kind of like upped it a little bit. I see you have a fancy cloth over there now. And yeah, <laughs> it's kind of, I mean, the kids, yeah. believe it or not, that little stuff, the kids literally, they talk about that. The yeah. little things are exciting for them. So I think that's great that you take your time to go and do that at the elementary level. I, I do. I think that's because, great. Uh, it was all meant to be fun and everything. And then when the other team lost, they were crying. And it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> They get yeah, into it. They do. Oh my, it's like cutthroat. To yeah. <laughs> they yeah. worry more about what they're going to name their team than uh, yeah. anything. But, uh, but I mean, it went down to like overtime and stuff, and I felt bad. That's <laughs> nice, though. I think that's a nice opportunity. Well, I love it, and all the kids turn around and watch it. And yeah, great. Yeah, I know we got to do fourth, and I think we're going to do it third. Well, good. I think the kids really enjoy it. You know, Mr. Rotuno gets a plaque. I mean, they get their name on a plaque. Yeah. And, uh, it's nice. Like you were talking about another great club that we do, and it's at the elementary, is Coder Club, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, Mr. Uh, Rotuno you know, does that. Uh, yes. It's, it's a great ac academic type club. Do we have those listed on a website? I don't know. I don't know, I don't, I don't know that all of those, yeah, like, unless you have a child, you wouldn't know that we oh, have all those different things. Once we talk about it. <laughs> yeah, because we, I mean, we have science club, we got math club. I Spanish mean, club. I mean, there's just, it's yeah. just a lot. Well, the Coder Club was on the. It's on our e-blast, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if it's on the website, though, but Ryan and I had to make sure we put that in the e-blast. <clears throat> Um, I also wanted to mention the North Jackson Citizens Association did a nice um, tree lighting ceremony that we had some members of our band perform at and they, it, it sounded really nice. It was a very small group, but it was in the gazebo, so it was, it was very nice and the kids that were in attendance did a nice job. Mr. Kittle was there. I bet there were close to maybe a hundred or so people in the community that came that day. Um, so it was, it was well done. Um, and we, I think our school was well, you know, promoted there also. And they did send a thank you for the school to be there. Mrs. Oh, that's Ms. Sudamak, yeah. Sudamak. Oh, that's nice. Um, I think that was all. Yeah, I think Ms. Perzuti was, was there too, I think, right? Yeah, I believe she was. Yeah, and there were some nice, nice kids and they had, you know, little beverages and things. So, well, that's it like, was uh, nice. Like just to go, even the concert, uh, we had the first and second grade concert here. It was standing room only. I don't know if anybody... I mean, it was packed. They had the seats yeah. were like all the way back, and they were standing room only. The kids just did a great job. And I know that day we were struggling with whether to cancel or not because uh, I think the schools around us canceled theirs. There was some athletic events canceled. So I know I met with uh, Mr. Hogue and Mrs. Pellin because we had athletic games that night too. But we decided to to let it go, which I guess now is a good decision. But you never know. Yeah. Uh, especially when other ones are canceling, it makes you wonder. But uh, the weather hit right after, though, yeah. because the next day we're off. <laughs> but and if we didn't get to camp concert in that night, is what we're worried about. We wouldn't have had it at night again. The way the the uh, schedules matched up, so we, that's why we kind of have to play with it. It's kind of. That. Hit, backup plan. hit and miss with attendance though with our parents and I wish there was a way for us to figure out um, for example we had a spelling bee even just today yeah. there were two families represented at that spelling bee and I was one of the families and there's another family right here um, why you wouldn't go see your child in a spelling bee I, I'm just dumbfounded at girls basketball they're awesome our girls basketball team is awesome 
one high school boy was at the last away game and that was my son that I brought. I was just like, are you kidding me? Where are the boyfriends to these beautiful girls? They don't even come to the games? And the parents, well, yes, I agree. But the parents don't come to watch their children. So sometimes it's hit and miss. Like I'm so glad that they're coming to the concert when they're little and, but, and I think Mr. Hoga's doing a fine job getting the younger, kids coming to the high school games. I know Jack is excited. He's in sixth grade and he gets to play even at a halftime JV game. He thinks that's awesome as a sixth grader getting to go to that court and play. Um, but something's got to happen for our girls when they're, uh, and when I say they're awesome, I mean they're awesome. They're awesome with no effort. Like, I know at home games they get a better crowd though. Yeah, know. it's just, I don't I know right how to. Just got everything going on. You know, I know, and, and we're small, I get that. It's just sad that the very parents of the children playing aren't even there. There's no words for that. There's no words. I know, the There's whole no game words. Is pretty crowded. So. so, but that's all I have. They're typically there on their wedding games. Lowville team was definitely. It was uh, rough. Yeah. yeah. There wasn't very many people. And it even wasn't on, a bad weather. Even on their side, there wasn't very many people. You're right. You're right. It was just, you know, kind of. So, but thank you. But the, the elementary spelling bee had a lot of parents there. Oh, did they? Good. Yeah. That was Good. the day before, I believe. Yours was, that was the, the elementary one was the day before, I believe. Well, good. That's good yeah. to hear. One thing to think of in response to that, though, like working parents, I mean, you don't always know people's schedule. You know, sometimes you can't bug out to be there at a spelling bee even when you really, really want to be, and not everybody works day shifts. So you never know some of the parents of the kids playing the evening games. That's true. It might not be what's well, a choice, but might be a choice that's they can't help. You know, mandated by finance. Michelle, that's a good point. I didn't mean to yeah. on that. My, when she said nobody, I'm like, hardly anybody. It's no, I know what you're saying, but I just mean there's so many factors with that that you don't always know. I've missed a lot of stuff because I've been working. It's not because I don't care. Well, I don't know the parents are in it, baby. I don't know. That's true too. <laughs> <laughs> You're a bad parent. <laughs> so I just had two quick things. Just a question, first of all, was there any hiccups with before school and the snow day? Like, did that affect anyone? I think it was called off early enough that it probably would have worked out, but you didn't have any parents who, like, were on their way to work and no. No, I mean, I, we put in the letters out that it. Six o'clock is when we took the Okay, call off. you did put that in. Okay, because uh -huh. I was just saying that's something to be respectful of the parents. Yeah. Like I know there were many times years ago when my kid was in elementary that I would be like dropping him off somewhere, and then I would get that call, and I think, oh, and then it would be a two-hour delay, and then it would turn around, and it would be a day off. Like that instills panic in working parents. So just something to keep in mind. But the six o'clock call yeah, was nice. We put in a letter too. If there is a two-hour delay, that there is no, you know, before school. Yeah. Like but even the, the time change. I guess I'm just saying, you know, it was fine this time, but just to always I remember, didn't. like, not to do it probably after 6 o'clock, because you could very well put somebody in a bind where they don't know what to do for that day. So, And then my last thing is just to um, comment on the survey again. I know the surveys, you said, aren't all in yet that we did. For this week? No, no, no. The surveys that went out to the parents. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, they were, they're, I mean, the cutoff was... Yeah, did, was there a decent response or... 35, I want to say. No, I'm sorry, 41. That's better. Yeah. And I yeah, know, that is more. Yeah, and I know I saw your post, like, putting it out there, but just with people here, like, spread the word because there was a lot of work from the board to get that initiative. And I can honestly say, after being here for four years, that really administration does care, and that is a great, great way to get your you know, opinion voiced in a very... Yeah, I think there was 41 and there was 20. It was really, it was 20 from mm -hmm. the high school and 21 from the elementary school. Because I really think that data will be used to improve things. And sometimes you just don't think of anything. Like what we just said, you know, like you see it one way, but you work in, mm -hmm. you know, education, whereas I work mm -hmm. in healthcare, which, you know, I've worked a million shifts and stuff. You just, different paradigms. So yeah, we've that's already, true. The principals and I have already went over it and looked at it and reviewed it. And each building has theirs to look at and, uh, Good. and there's some nice pieces in there about curriculum and stuff. I was going to say, what was it constructed? Did it help? In yeah, our... I think there was only one that just kind of did the same answer and you could tell it was just they did it to do it. But yeah. Yeah, most of them were pretty good. Uh, like I said, we got some good feedback on the stuff. It's, 
Uh, like the one on communication is kind of hard though, because some people want less communication, some people want more. Some people right. said like we don't try to communicate, which we communicate. I think more here from this school than, than any school that I know of. And the teachers' reception to the survey, like, did they get we to didn't read? Share with them, you did not share yeah, with the teachers. First okay. Of all, breaking it down and stuff. We'll present that on Labor Day or okay. the teachers' meeting to them. All right. I was just curious. Yeah, no, we didn't give them like all the pieces of it. Okay. That's all I had. So, public discussion. I have, I have two points. One was actually the survey. <laughs> Um, I guess are the survey not the exact results I don't feel need to be released to the public but what can be released to the public to let them know by them taking their time that you are listening and then this is what's being done that in itself will increase a buy-in and a support you know if you do a survey and then never hear anything you're never going to do a survey again so I guess I agree. from your perspective like how will those people know that uh -huh. something is being done about their I can put it in an e-blast or something. Let them know that we've, you know, that we've met and all that stuff. About it, you know. That's Jamie Campbell. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yes, sir. When would you mind introducing yourself yes, and hi, telling us about your, I'm, you know, I'm Jamie Campbell? <laughs> Do I have to say anything? Else? No, that that just makes it easier okay. for everyone to know because they're asking. <laughs> um, and then teachers, if it's related to the teachers, they will somehow get that information. From the, yeah, the from, the, from the surveys, okay. Because that would be, I mean, I've had people ask me, and, and again, because you guys wanted it promoted so well at the last board meeting, I tried to help promote that on social media. So I've had people ask me, hey, what, you know, what happened with that? Mm -hmm. And so just from experience, if, if they never hear anything, there's no real reason to ever do one again. So I would, I would recommend getting something out there saying, hey, your voices are being heard. and uh, That's a good point. You know what I mean? Well, what was the plan for the utility of it once we got the information back? What was the follow-up on? Well, originally it's just like the surveys we talked about. That's the concern, like when you want teacher surveys and stuff, it's supposed to be just for administration to take and, and work on. And it wasn't meant to be released and all that. That's... So we'll be creative and, and, and communicate that we got them and appreciate Or at least a thank you. We got um, right. a greater response this time. We got X number has. back. Administration is currently reviewing the results and, and communicating with teachers. Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff. I think it's that follow through that I think will increase just more of a community buy in and support of the school system. Sure. Do you feel like you're going to do it again? Or every report card do it again? Like keep it consistent or just do it like once a year, twice a year? Is that something that you guys. I think we were all planning on doing it once a year. Once a year? Okay. Do you have another point or no? I, oh. <laughs> I, 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 um, this one's a little difficult for me, and I, um, I first want to congratulate the uh, Jackson Milton girls basketball program. I'm not from Jackson Milton. My, my husband's family, I mean, Campbell's have been here for a while, not me personally, but in recent years, I've seen the um, girls basketball program be the shining light, really, of, of Jackson Milton, you know, going to dis districts, regionals. So now um, we're in the junior high girls program, and um, I just there's a great um, when you have a number one program in the state, you want to see that that program is being invested in at the lower grades. Um, and I can tell you, and, and this is something you guys can discuss. I have went through and talked to the athletic directors and the coaches, but our girls' seventh grade team has five members. Um, some of them are injured, playing um, with absolutely no breaks. Um, we have shin splints, we have uh, strained necks. They're getting beat by 30, 40, 50 points a game. Um, given it, they're all, mind you. Uh, a, suggestion, a suggestion has been brought, um, there's four to five eighth grade girls. Um, there's, a, there's a surplus of eighth grade girls that are legally allowed to play um, down. And they're currently um, not playing at all for eighth grade and when asked, could you help out the seventh grade, they're refusing. So like last night, uh, for example, we had injured girls, no subs, and it, you know, just awful. So that being said, I know that in the volleyball ball program with the surplus of eighth graders, they were asked to play down in seventh grade. They gained valuable experience, et cetera. So they got to I, play. They got to play. Um, they did it. So I'm, I'm kind of wondering why that is not being utilized. Actually, this is becoming a safety issue for our seventh grade girls. Um, and I, I just would like to know why can't 
the eighth graders support girls basketball like it, it was in volleyball. And so I, I think, you know, again, you look at a program that is so great, a shining light of a school, and you wonder, you, you know, it's basically crum going to crumble. It is crumbling at that junior high level. So if it continues, there will be no kids to play JV and varsity. I mean, when you beat 40, 50 points a game and you're injured and you're playing, that it, it becomes a problem. So I know this has been addressed maybe with some of you. Um, I know the athletic directors have been talking about it. I, I have talked to the coaches. I mean, I'm the kind of person I, I don't go to a board without, you know, trying to figure out what's going on. And so I don't exactly know what's happening other than, you know, there's, there's a refusal on the part of the eighth graders, eighth graders that do not play to step up to help build the program. So a, te a team. And it, it's, it's quite sad. And um, I, I, I believe I've heard if they, they said, if you make me, I will quit. You know, I'll just quit. And so there's that fear, I think, that, well, they're going to quit. So anyways, um, it's, it is becoming a bit of a, I, I would say, safety issue. Now, our girls are getting a two-week break here from games, which is good. Heal some strained necks, hopefully heal some shin splints, hopefully heal some banged up hands and fingers. Yeah, ready to have one move, so yeah we're also having one move. It's going to leave us with four. So as a, as a board and as a, you know, I kind of want to know, like, what is the plan? Do we just wait till there's only three left and then we don't have a seventh grade program? You know, I, I, I would like some discussion of, of how can we um, continue to build the most successful program we have going in the state, I mean, in our school system. You know what I mean? So that's it. I, I don't expect discussion right here, but it's, I mean, you, we have parents threatening to boycott. Um, it, it could get ugly really, really fast. Um, and, and I just think, <laughs> the, again, the number one program in the state in Division Four, number 15 overall, something has to be done to keep this program going and to keep our girls safe. What are they going to boycott? Though? Practices, games. The seventh graders. Seventh grade, eighth grade. My name is April Aylip, and my daughter's also on the team. So my daughter texted me today at 4 o'clock and said, Mom, can you please come pick us up? We'll go and practice in the Campbell's gym. That way, we don't have to be made fun of and look to be stupid. And she came home from practice and just was bawling her eyes out. And my daughter's very strong. She doesn't cry. She's not a crier. So it's just a very bad it's environment that, um, right it's, now. It's becoming a toxic culture. They love. They all of the girls love sports. They're athletic. They play every sport that they can, and it's just taking their character and smashing it in the ground. I want to I wanna understand this better, so please say that again, what your daughter said. I didn't understand the reasoning why she said So she, she wants said. to practice. She wants to keep on engaging and, and playing and making and being better and learning, but she doesn't feel that she can learn in that environment whenever the other girls are constantly putting them down and laughing. If they go to you know make a shot, they're laughed at and teased. And that type of environment is very hard to learn and grow. So they were. Th so what they were going to do was go into a different environment where just the five of them could go and not be made fun of and practice on their own. Yeah, two layers. Yeah, that it is. It very much is two layers. It, it's it is two layers. It's actually three. Thankfully, my daughter's not hurt yet. She's one of the <laughs> ones that doesn't have the injuries, but. I know. I'll discuss it. I'm learning more about it now. You guys, I don't have a child in the elementary, minor high school. I've seen the, these girls play. I've gone to, we go to a lot, my husband and I go to a lot of the different games. That element, that group, both groups, the eighth grade and the seventh grade, they're amazing girls and they're doing amazing things. But the five girls that they're talking about the seventh grade, they are, they're doing it. It's just, it's, it's a struggle to watch. <coughs> well, I, I would, I would tell you that school board member and as a, as a parent that's already went through that. Um, that. One, I think we have a great hot stove program that took, is uh, starting our kids out younger to hopefully kind of eliminate some of that because it's tough when you have four and five. We have five girls, they're all playing. My daughter in seventh grade had, my daughter had, my daughter had seven, was in seventh grade and had I think six. So I mean, we had maybe one that would come down and play as, a, you know, as an eighth grader. So I think one, our, with our school and our hot stove program, that to continue to build that helps. Um, I think obviously we need to probably bring that to the attention of the, of the coach and the AD and see what we can do there. But it is tough. I, mean, they're aware of it. I think that last year we had 12 in our hot stove <coughs> for our grade 12. 
I know that our high school coaches went down there and helped and, and took some of the varsity girls down to help that whole, all of them grow. Which is what's actually so very wonderful. What happens once their season need, starts, though, that gets more difficult to do, but I know that we have done some things to invest in the seventh and eighth grade program. But when you only have the, when you have the numbers, I mean, my daughters, how many girls are in freshman? 13 class? or 14, 13 14 in the whole, whole grade. <laughs> so not even talking about sports. There's only 13 in the whole grade. His, his daughter's one of them, too. <laughs> so I mean it's tough, but I'm not I'm not trying to make excuses. I'm saying we, right. I think I think it's definitely worth, as far as I'm concerned, looking into right. it and seeing if we well, can't get some of them eighth graders to come down and play. Because well, I had the same thing. The eighth graders, yeah. I mean they're the sophomores of today. Some of them play varsity on our girls team. Okay, and at that age, it's just I mean they didn't want to come. They didn't want to play down. I don't want to play down. Like it's interesting. Like James said, in volleyball they just did it. <coughs> they, they the same did girls. It, and they, and they loved it. Yeah. And they grew. So at what point, I guess my question is, is the athletic department going to run the program and the athletic directors versus the kids running what they want to do? You know, like, like, do you ask them, hey, can you please help them? Or do you tell them, we need you? We need you to gain experience yeah. and to help your counterpart and to continue to grow a successful program. So there's, there's, a, there's a, a disconnect there and unfortunately it's starting to affect safety really. Well, it's I Jackson mean, really. as a whole. Everybody's Jackson. I'm talking about talking to the children, the teachers and the staff, talking to the children. But what about the parents of these eighth grade children? It's my understanding they, they will not let their they, so they will have it's their kids. Parents, play. it's not it's the both. children. It's two separate coaches. Kirk. Okay. I mean I'm not sure at all. I can see why now, but what is well, it's just okay. you've got a great program going. I mean, it would just be awful to, to lose that momentum. It brings a lot of community pride to the school. People know Jackson Milton because of their girls' basketball program. I mean, that's just the bottom line. So, you know, any any discussion that can happen, that, you know, keep our girls safe, keep them motivated, keep them going, um, while continuing to build a program would, would be nothing but beneficial for the well, district. I, I want to thank you, um, Jamie, for coming because I know um, where you're coming from. I work with you in the hot stove. We've worked together for a number of years promoting basketball um, for girls and boys in addition to baseball and softball. So I appreciate you coming and bringing that to our attention. Um, and we will discuss it. I can tell you that we will. Thank you. Thank you. And I don't know all the ins and outs. The only comment I would have to say is we have a big problem with coaching. If a girl feels like she's going to get laughed at to practice, like that is just unacceptable. And that should be, there should be punitive, you know, consequences if you do that to somebody. It's not tolerated in the classroom. It's still taxpayer funded and it shouldn't be tolerated off the classroom because that affects esteem and that affects how those girls will perceive themselves and how they will move forward. Just that comment. That does need to be tackled. I don't know the specifics, but. I don't think that's cool. I don't think that should be tolerated. I agree. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Nope. Okay. We kids will get out here soon. We usually finish up around 9, 30, 10. <laughs> <laughs> Just facial expression. So, are we ready for adoption of a consent calendar? So moved. <laughs> Second. Motion by Mrs. Pittman. Second by Mr. Jones. Mr. Mosholi. Yes. Mr. Jones. Yes. Mr. Hoff. Yes. Mrs. Pittman. Yes. 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 So moved. Second. Motion by Mrs. Sanya. Second by Mrs. Pittman. Mr. Scholey. Yes. Mr. Jones. Yes. Mr. Hopkins. Yes. Mr. Pittman. Yes. Mrs. Yes. yes. Michelle, thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Very nice work.